we have already seen in Newman's principle that the symmetry of a physical property is related to symmetry of a crystal. So, symmetry of physical property must include all symmetry of the crystal and in some cases it can have actually more symmetry. We have seen examples of them in the previous videos. Now, in this video we will take a particular special case and see how the symmetry of the crystal affects or this the components of tensor representing a physical property. So, let us select our friendly electrical conductivity tensor. which has 9 components, but electrical conductivity is always symmetric. So, we consider only the 6 components, 6 independent components. Symmetry of electrical conductivity tensor can also be proved, but we are not going to do that in this course. So, we assume that electrical conductivity tensor is symmetric. So, it requires 6 independent components, but will all these 6 components always required or are they affected by the symmetry of the crystal. So, let us consider for our crystal a tetragonal crystal. Tetragonal crystal, and let us consider the simplest point group with point group 4. Point group 4 means the crystal has a 4 fold axis, which is usually taken as its z axis. and there are two orthogonal axes at 90 degree to the four fold axis. So, these are x 1, x 2 and x 3. Now, we want to see how this 90 degree rotation affects the physical property. So, let us create a set of axes which are rotated by 90 degree with respect to the original blue axes. So, the x 1 by rotation by 90 degree will come there so I call it x 1 prime and x 2 prime and since we are rotating by 90 degree about x 3. So, x 3 prime remains parallel to x 3. So, let us set up our transformation matrix x 1 prime, x 2 prime and x 3 prime on the left x 1, x 2, x 3 on top and then we quickly write the cosine of angles between these directions. So, if we take x 1 prime x 1 prime is at 90 degree to x 1. So, 0 it is along x 2. So, 1 and it is again 90 degree to x 3 0. Similarly, for x 2 prime x 2 prime is actually 180 degree away from x 1. So, that is minus 1 0 0 and finally, for x 3 prime 0 0 1. So, we have this set of A matrix. Now, we will apply this set of A matrix to 
the tensor components and we will demand that under this change N Newman will demand that since the crystal the tetragonal crystal has this four fold symmetry the property also should have the four fold symmetry which means that if I apply this coordinate transformation to my electrical conductivity tensor electrical conductivity should not change it should have the same tensor representation. So, let us demand that let us do that exercise. So, let us write the transformation of the components 1 by 1. So, let us first transform the 1 1 component. So, the transformed 1 1 component see actually actually this is now the tensor in the coordinate axis 1 prime. So, really we should write sigma 1 prime 1 prime, but this is just a simplification of notation that instead of writing sigma 1 prime 1 prime we write sigma 1 1 prime by saying that this these quantities are in the new coordinate system in the primed coordinate system. So, now by our tensor transformation formula this will be a 1 i a 1 j sigma i j i is a repeating index on the right hand side. So, there is summation over i and j is also a repeating index. So, there is summation over j. So, and both of them vary by um, vary from 1 to 3. So, there are 3 into 3 9 terms in this expression. Let us write those 9 terms for full detail we should write those 9 terms. So, let us make that attempt here. So, a 1 1 a 1 1 sigma 1 1 a 1 1 a 1 2 sigma 1 2 a 1 1 a 1 3 sigma 1 3. I have varied I have kept i fixed as 1 and I have varied j from 1 to 3. I will get another 3 terms by changing i to 2. So, I have a 1 2 a 1 1 sigma 2 1 And finally, we make I 3 and again have 3 more terms. So, A I, A I becoming 3 gives us A 1 3 So, this looks like a long expression with 9 terms, but realize that our A matrix is very very simple. It has only 3 non-zero terms. So, most of these 9 terms will actually vanish. So, let us look at that. So, for example, A 1 1 is 0. Since A 1 1 is 0, the first row everything goes and the first column also a 1 1 is there. So, all these terms go. So, we are left with only 4 terms now, but you can now see that a 1 1 3 a 1 3 is also 0. So, if you look at that here is a 1 3 and here is a 1 3. So, these terms will also be 0 and as well as this term all containing a 1 3. So, essentially we are left just with one term to play with 
and so this becomes a 1 2 square sigma 2 2, but a 1 2 is just 1. So, this finally reduces to simply sigma 2 2. So, the value of 1 1 component in the changed coordinate system should be sigma 2 2 by the tensor transformation, but Newman requires that since this 90 degree rotation is a symmetry rotation of the crystal, this should also be symmetry rotation of the property or symmetry rotation of the tensor. So, tensor should not change by this coordinate transformation. If the tensor does not change by coordinate transformation, so by Newman's principle, sigma 1 1 prime should not have changed its value, it should have remained sigma 1 1 and by the coordinate transformation we have seen, we have proved that this is equal to sigma 2 2. So, you can see that you have established a relationship between two components of the tensor that sigma 1 1 and sigma 2 2 should be the same using both the tensor transformation and Newman's principle. What about other terms? So, let us go ahead and try to write out the other terms. So, sigma 2 2 prime. Now, once we have done these 9 terms and we see that many terms are 0, we can directly write this carefully observing. So, let us say 2 i a 2 j sigma i j 2 i a 2 i are elements of the second row. They are the elements of the second row. In the second row, we see that only the first term is non-zero that is a 2 1. So, only a 2 1 can be non 0 other um, second row elements are 0. So, 2 i and 2 j both will remain non 0 only if i and j are 1. So, it is a 2 1 a 2 1 sigma 1 1 and both of these values are minus 1. So, we get minus 1 minus 1 sigma 1 1 is sigma 1 1. Again, since this is a symmetry rotation, Newman demands that sigma 2 2 prime should not have changed. So, sigma 2 2 prime should have been sigma 2 2 and that is equal to sigma 1 1. So, we just repeated the information which we have already established above, nothing new came out by trying to work out sigma 2 2. It is also saying that sigma 1 1 is equal to sigma 2 2. So, let us now go to the next term sigma 3 3 prime that is a 3 i a 3 j sigma i j look at the third row of our matrix the third row of the matrix has a non zero term only for a 3 3. So, unless and until we have a 3 3, we will have mm, 0 terms. So, we write this as a 3 3 a 3 3 sigma 3 3, but both these values are 1. So, we have 1 into 1 into sigma 3 3 or sigma 3 3 again bringing in symmetry, bringing in Newman's principle sigma 3 3 prime should anyway have been sigma 3 3 and that is what is the coordinate transformation also 
is giving me. So, it is well with all that effort we concluded that sigma 3 3 is equal to sigma 3 3 that is not a big news we anyway knew that. So, we now look at sigma 2 3 sigma 2 3 prime we are going cyclically down our matrix. So, we went this way 1 1 sigma 2 2 sigma 2 3. So, uh, sigma 3 3 now we will take 2 3 1 3 and 1 2 in turn to complete our cycle. So, sigma 2 3 prime a 2 i a 3 j sigma i j second row of the matrix maybe if I can cut and paste my matrix there. So, second row the only non zero term is a 2 1 the third row only non zero term is a 3 3. So, we get the non zero term at a 2 1 a 3 3 sigma 1 3. But a 2 1 is negative a 3 3 is positive. So, we get this as minus sigma 1 3. So, what it is saying and by Newman's principles 2 3 prime should have been 2 3. So, sigma 2 3 is minus sigma 1 3. Let us make a note of this and move forward. So, these two terms the 1 3 and 2 3 term should be negative of each other that is what this relation is telling us. Our next term is sigma 1 3 prime sigma 1 3 prime a 1 i a 3 j sigma i j first row we have only a 1 2 the third row we have 3 3 sigma 2 3 both these values are 1. So, we get sigma 2 3. Now, it is an interesting result because Neumann's uh, symmetry requires that 1 3 prime should be 1 3 sigma 1 3 prime should be sigma 1 3 and tensor transformation is requiring that this should be equal to sigma 2 3. So, we have another relation if you put these two relations together sigma 2 3 is negative of sigma 1 3 here and here we are finding sigma 1 3 is same as sigma 2 3. Both these relations need to be satisfied and the only number which can be um, satisfying both of them is 0. So, we get a value of 0 for these. So, we get an interesting result that sigma 1 3 and sigma 2 3 both are 0. our last term of the tensor sigma 1 2 prime a 1 i a 2 j sigma i j in the first row we have only a 1 2 in the second row we only have a 2 1 so, sigma 2 1, 1 2 is positive, but 2 1 again is negative sigma 2 1. So, we get 
minus sigma 2 1 and Newman's principle assures us that sigma 1 2 prime is same as sigma 1 2 is equal to minus sigma 2 1. But the symmetry of the tensor because we are saying tensor is symmetric. So, sigma 2 1 sigma 2 1 is nothing but equal to sigma 1 2. So, we can use that relation now this is same as sigma 1 2, but again this means that sigma 1 2 is negative of itself only possible when it is 0. So, this is the final relation we have got. So, we can see that all we have shown that all of diagonal terms are 0 in this case. Just the presence of a four fold axis of tetragonal makes all of diagonal terms sigma 1 2, sigma 1 3 and sigma 2 3 all of diagonal terms are 0. very very interesting result and the in the diagonal terms we have the first two terms equal. So, 1 1 and 2 2 are equal this we should have expected actually directly by the symmetry because in tetragonal due to the 90 degree rotation the x and y axes are equivalent. So, whatever you measure along x direction you should have the same value along the y direction. So, 1 1 will be same as 2 2, but we proved it through our tensor transformation and sigma 3 3 has a unique value which is different from 1 1 and 2 2. So, the form I can now write the form of conductivity tensor for a tetragonal crystal that form is using all these relationships we can say that sigma 1 1 and sigma 2 2 are equal they are the same number sigma 3 3 is a different number and all the off diagonal terms are 0. So, essentially you require only two co coefficients two constants for electrical conductivity of tetragonal crystal. So, this kind of symmetry analysis also simplifies the measurement or experimental work that one does not have although the crystal is an isotropic. So, suppose if we just thought that the we are working with tetragonal crystal and it is an isotropic it has different electrical conductivity in different direction then we will be measuring electrical conductivity along infinitely many directions, but that is a waste of effort what this analysis is showing us that all we do need to do is to measure electrical conductivity in the basal plane in x direction and in the along the c axis that is the direction 3. So, two measurements will completely characterize the electrical conductivity of the tetragonal crystal. Now, let us do one, one once we have established this just one more extension of this analysis is we want to find out what is the electrical conductivity in any direction in the plane. Now, 1 1 and 2 2 are equal that we have established so, x 1 and x 2. So, these two are equal, but what about a direction 
let us say going at some angle theta to x 1 axis. What will be the electrical conductivity in this in this direction? So, recall that we have shown in another video that the property in any given direction that is in the theta direction is nothing but the tensor sigma i j multiplied by n i n j where n i and n j are direction cosines of the direction of interest. In this case you can see that n 1 is the cosine with the x 1 axis. So, n 1 is cos theta n 2 is sin theta and n 3 is 0. So, we can try to find sigma theta. We already know the matrix form. So, let us write this. We will need 9 terms. So, sigma 1 1 n 1 n 1 sigma 1 2 n 1 n 2. So, let us complete these 9 terms. apply the condition n 3 is equal to 0 because we are talking in of basal plane. So, wherever n 3 is there those terms vanish. So, we are left with these four terms. So, let us simplify that. Sigma 1 1 n 1 was cos theta so, sigma 1 1 cos square theta, sigma 1 2 n 1 is cos theta and n 2 is sin theta. So, cos theta sin theta 2 1 by symmetry is also 1 2. and 2 2 is with sin square theta, but we have seen that 1 1 and 2 2 are equal. So, we get sigma 1 1 theta and here and sorry we have not yet noted. So, th this term thankfully is also going to vanish because we have established that sigma 1 2 is 0 you can see that. So, we do not have to add the, these terms here we just cancel sigma 1 2 is 0. So, we have completed our exercise this is sigma 1 1. So, sigma it is independent of theta sigma theta is equal to sigma 1 1. So, anywhere any angle any direction at whatever angle in the basal plane in the x y plane of the crystal the electrical conductivity remains sigma 1 1 that is it is isotropic in a plane normal to the four fold axis. Not only it is same in the x 1 direction and x 2 direction but it is same 
in all possible direction within the plane. So, this shows how the symmetry plays a role in defining the symmetry of the physical property. Symmetry of the crystal plays a role in defining the form of the tensor components and through that the symmetry of the physical property. Thank you.